All right, so I'm doing a little work on the Ibanez S series. Got the neck in the neck holder. I ended up altering the neck holder a little bit to where I put a couple of two by fours underneath there, counter some, some drywall screws in there. And uh, gives me enough room here to basically clear my workbench, counter, whatever you want to call it. So, and uh, it grips pretty good. It holds the neck in place pretty good. I still have to hold the neck a little bit back here as I'm filing, but you know. So, all these green, all these black marks on the green are places where the frets were iffy, either high or low. So I ended up uh, going over the neck, and you can kind of see there's quite a few spots. So I went over the neck to make sure it was still straight. I went over it with the rocker to check to see which frets were high or low, and... I checked the radius of the neck with my radius gauges and I used a feeler gauge under the radi radius gauge just to make sure that that radius gauge was up tight up against the fretboard in different places and come to find out this is a 16 inch radius on here and luckily I have a 16 inch radius block. Now I'm only using, I believe this is 320 grit sandpaper. Yeah, 320 grit. So I'm not cutting this very aggressive at all. And I don't want to cut it very aggressive. My sanding beam has 320 and 220 on it. The 220 will be a little bit more aggressive than the 3. And uh, I didn't want to go that route. So basically what I'm doing is just taking my radius block and kind of just going down, going down the neck with the frets. Trying to stay pretty even. And these last three that I'm noticing over here that are kind of iffy still. I don't know if you can see it or not, but uh, the little black line that was is real narrow towards the center is starting to open up. This one's opened up now. This one's a little bit opened up. That one still has a little ways to go. So the 320 is not cutting this really fast, and this is taking taking a good length of time to do. But this is the way that I wanted it. And once I start seeing metal, once I start seeing metal over here in these three, um, I'm done. I could use my beam on this, but since I got a radius block, I might as well just use it, right? And using the radius block can guarantee that my frets are going to be with the neck. So this is not very hard, just very time consuming. And the frets are looking all right as far as how much uh, meat I have on them still. So I'm not too concerned about the cutting them down too far. And that's what I was kind of worried about. That I was going to end up filing these guys down pretty far and not have any frets left. So it's coming along just, just the way I want it now. Um, there is very, very little black left on these guys here. And I could probably get away with that right there if my rocker tells me I'm all right. So let's go ahead and check that out. Yeah, my rocker's telling me I'm good. Yep, maybe it's a little bit more. It's still a little bit low right there. So it's high over here. I can bring that down. Let's 
see how that is now. It's a lot better than what it was. I have to do a couple more passes and then I think I'll call that done. This is a stupid news report with your host, Eric C. Thank you and welcome. Today on Stupid News, a short Michigan man has been spotted at a Michigan Walmart. Again, the short man has visited another produce aisle. Store security cameras caught the man but was unable to identify the man due to the Walmart rollback sign blocking the security camera's view. One witness was said that the short man was again measuring cucumbers. The same witness was able to have a sketch made of the short Michigan man. This will be the last time anyone will be taking any statements from a Walmart employee. And now for the weather. Alexa? Where's Lexa? Well, I guess there will be no weather. But I can tell you this. It's fucking cold outside. Other stupid news. A Chicago man is holding George's guitar hostage. If anyone has seen this man, please report to George. More stupid news. Gibson has started a new quality control tactics. Gibson has also found a way to boost morale uh, by the employees having a good laugh. Gibson's found that watching YouTube videos of this man is a very, very good way to keep their quality control tip top with a smile. Gibson might be changing their uniforms in the future to a shirt that looks like this. That was today's stupid news. Be looking for stupid news on later dates. And remember, if it's not broken, don't Terry GG and G it. That was your stupid news update. All right, so I jumped ahead and basically completed most of the fretboard as far as crowning goes. Uh, it's a very time-consuming and boring process. Didn't really think you guys really want to watch the whole thing. So I kind of, you know, just speeded up everything. And basically, I'm on my last half of, or last, last por portion of the fretboard. Now, depending on the type of frets you have, you may want to use a diamond grit uh, fret uh, crowning tool either um, Stumax got them uh, you can find them basically all over eBay uh, make sure you use the right uh, size for the fret they have small medium large I don't know if they have a jumbo one or, or not I think that's just a large size as far as the uh, fret file goes but for my crowning tool I've just fell in love with this three-sided Stumac crowning tool and uh, it also could be used for basically fixing the edges of the fret as well the edges of the corners are basically smooth and the cutting materials on the flat surfaces on each part of the triangle it works out great for me I've gotten used to it and it's basically my number one tool to go to once you start using something like this and you get the hang of how it works and how to use it for the different types of frets that you have because uh, with some frets you kind of have to go more on an angle instead of being using it as a just riding the, the flat surface on an angle like this sometimes you have to go a little bit more on an angle with it and uh, yeah I, I just I just fall in love with it so basically I am right about uh, here 
I want to say with my frets. I think I just completed this one. Now basically what you're looking for is after you do your, your leveling, uh, I check the rocker and I go back and forth on the neck from side to side to check to see if there's any frets that may need a little bit more leveling. Um, sometimes you, you know, sometimes you'll find something that's a little bit rocky. You go over it again a little bit more with the your block or beam and uh, finish the leveling job to get it nice and flat. Um, then I'll go over it with a black Sharpie marker again and just coat this top surface of the fret with the black marker and go to town with the crowning tool. Now what you want to see is you want to see a nice pencil line going down the center of the fret. And I noticed a lot with lighting, it, it makes a big difference because trying to look at this from an angle, it just looks like a, a blur. It's hard to see. But when you tilt it with the light, you can see that line going down the center. And you want to make sure that that black line is perfectly centered just by eyeballing it, that it, it's really nice centered with that fret. That way it's not wavy or one side's cut a little bit more than the other. And you want to be careful that you go with the fret with this and uh, or whatever crowning tool, you go with the fret and the radius nice and flat and make sure that you get your crowning done perfectly. And like I said, time consuming and it's not a fun job. Um, so I'm on this one right here. So basically what I'm doing is holding it flat up against the fret a little bit more slight of an angle than what the angle is right now and just following the radius evenly with the fret. Now if you do a couple of passes it will remove the marker but it's really not crowning. So you've got to do a few passes and take a look at it. And you can kind of see if it's on an angle a little bit. And then you go to the opposite side and you do the same thing. And if you got to go over again, that's not a big deal. If you kind of see that it's not really... Um, doesn't look right something doesn't look straight or it seems like you still see a lot of black you can go over it again now I keep a can of compressed air which is pretty much getting to be empty I have to get some more of these to clean off the surface after I get done filing now this neck rest I love this thing this was kind of a great investment to get something to hold your neck and be able to work on it without it being on the guitar um, doing fret leveling and uh, uh, crowning sometimes the body of the guitar gets in the way this is great the only one thing that i'm going to do is i'm going to get another one of these things and i'm going to get one to where um basically same size same length but i'm going to get one and make a bracket to where it can float kind of like on uh, a pivot to where i can if say if i have a les paul or something with a um uh a set neck to where I can't remove the neck from the guitar, then I can still put something like this under to support the neck and it'll pivot with, basically pivot with whatever angle that neck is on. Clean off some of the particles off of this. And uh, yeah, that'll be, that'll work out pretty good. Good, at least I think so. That'll be my next purchase again to get another one of these blocks. They're I think they're like twenty some dollars. They're not that bad, or thirty dollars or something. Um, and they're pretty easy to get. So I am back over here now. The only thing is, is it does make it a little difficult when you get to the part of the neck where it's not supported. So you're going to have to hold it a little bit more secure. But I really think it's doing a, a great job as far as uh, holding the neck, keeping the neck stable to where you can work on it. Thank you. 
And you do want to clean the file a little bit. So this is something that you you want to do because it will get a little bit of buildup on the file as well as far as metal goes. So a little bit of air can clean that up. Or if you got an old toothbrush, hell, an old toothbrush. Kind of scrub it a little bit with an old toothbrush. Clean up the uh, the cutting part of the file. And yeah, it's coming along pretty damn nice. And once I get my other parts in for the neck, uh, for the pickups, I'll be able to start putting that together. I gotta touch this one up just a little bit at the bottom over here. That's better. And once I get my pickup rings in, I'll be able to put this thing back together and get it rocking again, you know? Getting down to the last three. All right, well, I got two more to go, and, and that'll be basically it. So I'm going to end this video now. Basically got the crowning done. Just two more left. Next, we'll be polishing the frets, and I'll start uh, I'll make a video about how I do that as well, using different grades of sandpaper, or I'm going to try out the new uh, fret erasers that I've got. And uh, I believe it's... Oh man, I can't remember what the grid is. I know there's a 1000, I think there's a 400, and I think there's like a 180 grit inside there. I'm not too sure about that 180 grit though. Um, that might be a little bit too coarse. But uh, yeah, that'll be next on this. You guys take care, have a good one, and I'll catch up with all you all later.